Welcome back, my fellow plant fanatics, my fellow plant lovers, plant growers, my showers, all of you guys. Welcome back. My name's Lauren with Laura's Leaves. And if there's one thing that I love about collecting houseplants is being able to take those houseplants and create more. So how do you grow more plants? Well, you either plant seeds or you propagate. And I really do enjoy propagating my collection to create more plants to fill my home and give to friends and family. I have a number of plants in my home that have started completely from propagations and I would love to share them with you guys. So that's what I'm gonna do today. The plants I'm going to start with first is the smallest and cutest little propagation. And that is the philodendron micans. Can you even tell that this is a micans since it's so small? This started out as a propagation about that tall. And now still small, but it has grown three leaves and it's about to push out its fourth leaf. See how shimmery that is? I don't know if it picks up on camera. So very cute. Next on my list of propagations is this little donkey's tail, burrow's tail, sedum of some kind. All these little things fall off and land in the pot and create new babies. Now I have about seven of these propagating in a different vessel, but they've only have little shoots started. This, however, came from a succulent arrangement that had them glued into the pot. You know, the ones you get at big box stores and they have a variety of stuff in it and half of it's glued in. Yeah, pulled him out last summer. I wanted to get rid of the other succulents in there and I pulled them out plucked off some of these guys, stuck them back in the pot, and he uprooted all on his own. Succulents are one of the only plants that I propagate directly in soil. Depending on the type of succulent will depend on how I do it, whether it's a leaf cutting or if I cut off the plant and just re-root it into the soil. He's really cute. The next plant I wanna talk about was started from seed actually, or maybe pit. And it's my avocado tree, doing really good. I've had it under the grow light all winter and all this right here is new, everything upward. And I'm gonna put him outside this summer to see if that helps him grow a little bit quicker. He maintains himself really well. Avocado trees, once you get them established, are easy to take care of indoors at least i've only done it once so i guess how much do i really know right but this one is doing so well so i love this avocado tree one day it will grow avocados for me i have i believe in it it's gonna happen right this is my hoya lacunosa and this was cuttings from a friend's plant it rooted really easily for me. However, it hasn't put off very much new growth, but I just noticed, and hopefully I can get in here to show you guys, we have new growth up in there. Right there are some new little leaves, down in there, Hoya lacunosa, and it's growing like a new vine down here, so that's cool. I have total faith in this. This took a while to look okay, but it looks good now. I've noticed with Hoyas, they do take a little bit longer to kind of recover from the propagating process from going from water or sphagnum into the soil. They do get a little shocked, but I think all plants do. Some just take a little bit longer to rebound, and that's all right. I need a coffee break. I'm getting a little winded. It's four something in the afternoon. And when I got out of work, I came home and made coffee because it's one of those days. They switched my schedule around at work. 
I go in an hour and a half early, which is great because I get out an hour and a half earlier. So get my day done. The next plant I have to share with you guys is my comeback kid, my Shuffalera plant, my umbrella tree, or whatever you want to call this gal. She had a rough start her first year, but when I put her outside last summer, which I think I've talked about on my channel in regards to this plant, she snapped back. She totally is the comeback kid. And I've actually taken this plant and hold on and propagated some more. So this plant was from propagations. I kind of got it up and made more. Now I'm kind of worried about this one for the fact that I had the Shuffalera propagating for a very long time, probably about five to six months in water and it had really great roots. They were really well established. I was just lazy on getting them potted up when they were ready. So they're very used to the water. They have water roots. They have, a, you know, become accustomed to just completely growing in water. So when then planting them in the soil, they can kind of go into shock. So one thing you can do with plants that have really established water roots is make sure you keep the soil moist for the first couple weeks, first month that you have them transferred into the dirt. That way they can acclimate a little bit more easily because they won't be used to going from being in water for six months to getting watered once a week and having, or once every two weeks, whatever your watering schedule may be. But when that soil dries out, they're not used to being dry. So you kind of got to gradually work your way into letting them dry out more and more each time you water. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope it does. Next on the list, the easiest plant to propagate. One of the easiest. Pothos. Duh. Pothos are easy. Let me set this here. Pothos are so easy. You cut at a node. So you still have the node left. Place that node in the water and you will begin to see roots. And another great thing about pothos is that there's natural rooting hormone in their vines. When their roots produce and you put other plants with your pothos when they're propagating, it acts as a hormone or a fertilizer, it has good nutrients that can actually jumpstart propagation in other species of plants. So if you have a plant that you're trying to propagate, and you're kind of nervous or you want it to go a little faster, put a pothos cutting in with it or a couple. Help it out, you know, give it a buddy. And a pothos is a good buddy to have because they grow great. I've, this summer it'll be about a year that this has been propagated. And as for this one, I'm just trailing quite a bit. I've probably had this going on two and a half years, two years but they grow quite quick. And I've cut this one. This one I have not. So this is what it looks like from being propagated last summer to now. Very happy with golden pothos. Almost done. <laughs> Even though there's a bunch around my house that I didn't bring down and put in front of me because that's a lot of work. So I got most of them. Isn't this the cutest little propagation? This is a Pilea peppermoides. Last summer, I bought a pretty good sized plant and it did not do very well for me. The popular Pilea peppermoides just shrunk and died a slow, painful death, but he left behind one little baby and I had this above my kitchen sink propagating for a really, really, really long time. And finally one day I'm like, I'm just gonna stick it in this little pot. And it's just now maintaining itself, pushing out little baby growth, cute, adorable. And I'm having better luck so far. I've had this in this pot for about going on two months. And the miniature sized version of itself is doing a lot better than that big boy I had, so. 
here we have the world's cutest bonnie spider plant aunt charlene if you're watching this is the one i'm propagating for you so here she be the cat got to it i won't lie you'll know if you see your spider plants looking like this it means your cat chewed on it if you have cats if not you have animals in your house this is the only type of plant besides my bromeliad that my cats try to chew keep your spider plants up i i don't even know my cat tries to reach for them wherever i put it so good luck cutest little thing though so aunt charlene if you're watching here's your new bonnie and one more adorable little teeny tiny propagation peperomia frost i had to think about it for a minute i got this little peperomia frost at a plant swap back in december and it was propagated from a stem cutting and at the bottom of the stem the little babies will come out and i potted it up in here about two months ago right when i propagated the pilea peperomoides just doing her thing looking cute and little all right so i have one more thing i want to talk about so i went and i cut up my burgundy princess. I cut it right here. I cut one there and I cut one there. But this is my burgundy princess I got from Gabriella Plants. And there's actually quite a bit of pink variegation on it compared to even some pink princess philodendron pictures that I see. Not a significant amount, but now this leaf I'm going to cut off, but I wanted to keep it on to show you the pink, but for the most part, completely reverted. There's one piece, hold on a minute, bear with me. All right, I'm back. There was one piece that has a decent amount of pink on it, if you're into that. I didn't really buy this because of the pink, not really a pink person, but the price was really good, and I actually love the color of the Burgundy Princess. The dark, deep maroons, they almost look black-like, like the Dark Lord philodendron, kind of. And I really like that. But I decided to cut the two, stalk, the two tops of the plants off because this keeps happening to me. The leaf will come in and then snap and the remaining top of the leaf will remain in the sheath or whatever, petiole, whatever this is called. But good thing is there's already a new, I don't know, I think you're gonna be able to see it, but there's already a new leaf coming out of this part. Now, I have another one of these cuttings that isn't doing this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. What's your favorite plant to propagate? I love propagating the pothos or any vining plants I have really good luck with. Or Tradescantia. I forgot to get down my Tradescantia. That thing it propagates so easy, so fast. I also forgot my Maranta Lucanura or something. Though Marantas propagate so quick. I have so much I could show you guys. Maybe I'll take you around and show you where these propagation plants live. Hmm. I'll have to... Maybe do that one day. I think I'm going to do a plant tour soon as well. So be watching out for that. So thank you guys. Thank you to all my returning subscribers. If this is the first time you're stopping by and watching, thanks. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, especially if you're into this type of plant content because plants are fun and awesome. So if you're into that, come back. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.